Hello, this is Jeffrey Fox again with a small lesson group on how to do page rank um, using Python. And this is a, basically a data analytics, a technology used to support X informatics or big data processing. And um, this is just one of your library of data analytics that you will have uh, available to you as you do your big data processing. So here are the actual resources needed by this uh, lesson. Uh, the first uh, set correspond to calculating page rank given a set of, of uh, pages with, with uh, information on which page points to what other pages. That's described at these uh, websites I gave here and the code uh, which is which uh, has both the this sort of basic functions and the um, Driver is in page rank 2.py available on your resources. We also have some code um, which uh, you type in the um, a website URL and it will tell you what page rank Google think it's, thinks it has. All right, now let's come to the uh, sort of basic data analytics. Um, and um, we did discuss page rank uh, back when we did uh, web search. And the key thing for finding the page rank is the adjacency uh, or linkage matrix. And that's AIJ and AIJ, where I runs from one to six. We probably need a pointer. So here's I of one, here's I of six, here's J of four. And J of six. So what does A14 equal to one mean? It means that four only has only points to one other site, and that site is number one. So that's that one there. Uh, five does not point at uh, at one. Six does, and six only has one URL on it, so it just points to one site. So that's what those ones here are. Let's do one other case. Let's look at this half here. That's um, uh, um, this is uh, i equals six. So it's talked about site six. This is j equals one, which means it's to do with what one pointing at this site. So one has two sites it points to, so each has weight a half, and that's that half there. One of the ones it points to is six. And the other one it points to is two up here. So these um, these um, matrix entries reflect direct, directly uh, the um, graph that's shown here of what points to what. So you take that uh, matrix A and um, we form a new matrix M, which is damped. By adding a, a matrix S, which corresponds, though, if you remember in our original discussion, to the chance that somebody will type a random URL in the uh, header of the um, of the web page, and so you form a new matrix M, which is uh, D times A plus one minus D times this uh, matrix S, where everything has. Um, Every entry has the same value, which is in, the, in this case one sixth. And the folklore says that the good value of D is 0.85. And there's 85% chance that you'll actually follow one of the links on the page, and 15% chance that you'll give up and go to a totally different site. Then the uh, basic algorithm is actually very simple. Um, we um, set um, up an initial matrix, uh, sorry, initial vector x. x is going to be the vector of page ranks for each of the pages. So the first position of x0 is the rank of uh, site 1. The sixth position of x0 is the rank of uh, site 6. And um, the page ranks have to add up to 1 in the simple formalism. And so you always normalize these vectors so the sum of the components, which are positive, add up to one. And so that's in Python, gotten by this command over here, where n is the number of sites, ones of n over n. 
And then we actually just uh, iterate the following equation. X zero is replaced by M times X zero times the norm of the new value of X zero, which is should really say M times X zero in that equation. So we use um, in this uh, page rank two, it has all these methods, and the first method is shown here. And um, it just iterates, because remember, we have to keep on doing this. It, uh, you're meant to form the A time, A is, the A is actually really here, M, it's the, the whatever matrix you're analyzing. So it's just an, it's not, it's not the actual adjacency matrix, it's the modified adjacency matrix. You form the dot product of um, X zero with A, and then you replace X zero by X zero divided by its norm. And if you have the option one here for the norm, it says that this particular norm is such that the sum of the elements of X zero is one. Notice that in many other applications, you take a different norm, which is the sum of the squares of the components is one. Here you have the sum of the components is one because we're doing dealing with probabilities and not probabilities add to one. The squares of probabilities do not add up to one. This um, this um, the function I took from the web is slightly inaccurate. It just fixes a number of iterations. It's actually probably better to just stop when you uh, reach a um, certain threshold change. And we'll come to that later on. Uh, we use these two built-in um, Python methods. The norm method, which I pointed out, has this option. If the option is two, it calculates traditional Euclidean norm. And for option of one, it calculates the sum of the moduli. And in this algorithm, the x, uh, the values of x, in fact, are positive, so the modulus doesn't actually matter. Uh, matter. But we, as we, as I mentioned, need option one. And uh, we need this dot product of two arrays, or in his case, matrix times a, a vector. And um, so um, you just look up and you find that you just have to do as we do there, do numpy dot dot of the matrix A into the vector x zero. You'll get what uh, people want, which is M, the matrix A times x zero, matrix vector multiplication. I pointed out that I would view this as a slightly inaccurate in that it has a fixed number of iterations, and that's really not terribly useful. If you actually already converge, you can add another parameter to this uh, function, which is, gives you method base one. I just changed, added a one to the, um, to the argument. And uh, <coughs> I added a threshold here, and when the normalization of the Change in x um, is um, which is x zero. The uh, x one is set to the old value of x zero here and here, and then uh, you just calculate the, the difference. And if this um, difference is less than the threshold, you stop. So this is just a minor change, which, if you cared about it, will save computer time. So that's then, this is then just a repeat of this function. We don't need to go through it again. But they actually, in the, in the page that I took from the web, they use 130 iterations. In the first example we do, the matrix A I gave you already, actually 20 iterations is more than enough. In other cases, you need more than 20. <laughs>